Ich sitze hier beim Sacred Ground Festival mit dem Mann, der das Ganze kuratiert und quasi ähm, ins Leben gerufen hat. Hello, Ryax. Hi, happy to have you guys here. Happy to be here and I must say, first of all, congratulations that you found this amazing place. I've been to the Uckermark before, but never been to a festival here and I think it fits perfectly well. How did you find this place? Um, we really wanted to do something uh, outside of Berlin, you know. Berlin's been one of my homes the last uh, five, six years and it felt really important to take people out of the city context and put them back in nature. And um, this area, we were kind of looking anywhere within a couple of hours of Berlin and and uh, we had some friends that, that, that knew about the property here, knew about this area, this little village actually. Live, some of their parents live just down the road. So, um, you know, it was kind of a, a beautiful accident in a way. And then the people that own this property invited us um, to come and do it here. And we thought it was a really nice thing to get to bring to a small community in an area here in Uckermark and to um, kind of bring some of the city energy here and let the land speak to everybody from the city, you know, and take this energy back there. So. I know that a lot of people use the public transportation, for yes. example, from Berlin. We yes. took the car and, you know, where we park, there are cars from almost everywhere. A lot of cars from Berlin, but also yeah. from Nordrhein-Westfalen, you know, from Cologne yeah. and the area around there. So I thought there must be a huge interest in this kind of festival if people drive, you know, like five or six hours to come here. Yeah, I mean, we've got a lot of people here um, from Amsterdam. We've got people here from the north of Ireland. We got people here from the U.S. So um, one of the important things for us um, when we were talking about creating it was that it wasn't a Berlin festival. It's for the world, you know. It's for Europe. It's for everybody that has this mindset. And um, I think people will always travel when they love something, when they have a relationship to something. And uh, it's really nice to feel that people have come from Italy or from Ireland to be here and and hold this space with us. And um, It makes it more of a community, you know, rather than just Berlin here. Um, but also, obviously, having the, the relationship with Berlin and the, the kind of culture and the art of that city helps because it, it's kind of the seed, in a way. We're finding that balance between um, this kind of uh, open culture energy, you know, a slightly hippie almost. Maybe it's... Um, alternative you know and the the kind of berlin world and the techno worlds and the live music and art and massage and we're really trying to create something special for people so they get all of their senses nourished you can lay on the grass on a beautiful afternoon like this and then you could be dancing at sunrise we, we, we all will be dancing at sunrise you know and i think that's the balance of of what we love as human beings to experience all these things together so and to do it from all over the world yeah You just um, spoke about the senses, and I would totally agree with that. And one thing that's really special here is that you cannot use um, your mobile phone. You know, you yes, cannot sure. go in the Internet, which sure. is really rare nowadays. Yes. So that's also, I think, one point to come down. Yeah, and actually, it's interesting. You don't really see many people on their phones, you know, um, and you don't because people are being present. And I think that's the, that's the thing, whether you have... It's nice that we don't have internet connection here. We kind of did that on purpose too a little bit. But the idea that people are enjoying life more than Facebook is an important thing and a good reminder to take back into the city and life with you. And um, when when we are getting our senses nourished, you know, taste, and smell and, and movement of the body and all these things, then we don't actually need those other things. And I think that's a really healthy reminder just mentioned the massage place yeah. um, which is like 10 meters from here yes. maybe around there there is a I call it chill out area I yeah, don't know how sure. you would mention it yeah. or name it um, which is your favorite place at the whole area <laughs> it changes um, I think the nice thing about this and the grounds is that you have different energies in different spaces and um, we as human beings change from hour to hour we are different humans you know we carry our essence with us but we change and uh, I think what's really nice is you can you can be out here in a quiet space and you can have a smoothie with fresh vegetables and fruits and I'm probably going to get a massage actually after this and then um, you can watch 
beautiful music here kind of at the main stage and then go over and listen to techno in the tent and each each part of it has a, a place in my heart you know and um i think that's what's really nice is to have a relationship with the whole thing not just one area but it's nice if you feel like chilling out you can go nap and hang out on the grass and you know if you feel like dancing you can go dance so it's really nice to have that balance here I've just been to Roskilde Festival, which is a huge festival, mm -hmm. you know, like big ones in Germany. But yeah. there I also figured out that it's possible, you know, it doesn't matter how many people there are. But if you have a certain attitude or you have a certain thought before you do a festival, you can create something special. For sure. example, there's a political um, mind behind it or thought yes. behind it. The equality, for yeah. example, was a topic yeah. this year there. And I kind of felt like here it's very peaceful, you know, everybody treated each yes. other very respectful yesterday i mean there's also alcohol here of course but you know it wasn't like aggressive or anything yeah, it was just seen, chill yeah i haven't seen anything but love and and smiling and connection and that's something we really encourage and foster you know in, in the kind of manifesto and also giving a little speech yesterday we're a family now you know we take care of each other we, we've come here to, to do this together um, I don't think it's about the singular experience, it's about the collective experience. And when you focus on collective experience, your personal experience elevates. It becomes much more powerful. So um, that is an important thing, and, and I think you can grow that. But at a certain point, we have to figure out how, how many people can still hold that same energy. And that's kind of what we're playing around with in, in this next kind of few years of the festival, is how do we keep this intimacy and this relaxed, peaceful nature to it and still be able to explore um, more ideas or have a slightly bigger community but it's not our intent to have a massive festival you know it's it's important I think to to do the anti-festival in a way um, you know we kind of call it a gathering uh, more so because it it feels like um, you know when you walk to a festival you get a little bit stressed your nervous system You're like, okay, I'm going to a festival. I, I don't know where the toilets are. I don't know where I'm going to buy my water. There's long lines. There's so many people, you know, and you just never feel that here. You always feel safe. I could leave my things over there and just walk away and come back. And there's something really nice um, about that. And I think that there is an intent to build that and to have more people. But um, as long as we keep that same heart, then it all makes sense. So let's talk about the music, which is, of course, a big part here. Yes, yes. And I thought, although, you know, this is my job, I'm into music, you know, like 100% each day. There are artists I haven't yeah. seen or I haven't experienced yeah. before. And yesterday evening, for example, it was so cool. First we saw you, it was, you know, we were there and like, okay, having yeah, a good sure. time. And then I saw an, an um, Austrian band, never... Oh, so good to you, yeah. Yeah. I, no, what I wanted, so, so just thought you said the name. Electro Gucci, yeah. Yes. Well, I, I've never heard of Electric Gucci yeah. before. So I saw on Spotify, you know, yeah. I listened to one or two tracks there. But this was like so cool because it was techno played live yeah. on a festival. Yeah. So you have experienced them before or who was it who said, like, you know, for example, let's do this? Yeah, I mean, that's the whole point is, um, you know, Frank and I have a beautiful relationship making music together. And also we have a lot of the same influences musically and then some different ones. And uh, I think what's really nice is that we're bringing our worlds together. So he, he knew the Electro Gucci guys and really wanted them to come and play. And um, it's almost like you're making a... I mean, there's too many people make playlists now. It's kind of redundant in a way. But it's like you're curating this. You're inviting people that you love musically to come and play. So, you know, the, the artist that was just on Bea, she... Um, is a friend of both of ours from Amsterdam and I think she's an uh, incredibly talented amazing young artist and uh, I'm honored to get to have her come here and everybody's sitting there going who is this person you know she's beautiful and her music's beautiful and that's the point is is how to um, curate and give both the artist a place to play and give the people something amazing that they don't expect and then of course you have Matthew Johnson last night playing an incredible set and Rod had and you know tonight Frank um, and you it's just crazy the people that we've got to play such a small festival um, you know you think about Rod Hat or you think about even Frank and I playing as Howling or uh, Arm Live or um, Matthew Johnson or um, you know the guys Marcus all the guys playing tonight um, any of them could bring 500 people 800 people to a show in Berlin a thousand people 
So it's really nice that we get to share such an amazing quality of music with so few people as well. And um, and then at the same time, to break somebody's heart open, seeing something they've never seen before, and to give someone that experience. And both of those are very important. So we're working on that. So I can just say from the you know visitor point of view that it works. But I can right. imagine that also from the artist's point of view, this is really special. I mean, I know a lot of these guys you know, fly to a city like Tokyo, do yes. a DJ gig for three hours, yes. fly back or whatever, London or Amsterdam. So they come here. Can you tell me what they... Oh, it's so good. We So uh, the two nights ago, we played a show in Ibiza at Space, this huge club. And it was uh, a night put on by uh, some you know friends of ours that we work with, uh, the Tale of Us guys. So they had Rod had, they had Alex Doe, and they had uh, Arm, and they had Howling. We played a show there. And then the next day, we wake up after not enough sleep, and we all get on the plane together. You know, and we fly up here, and it's the same people. And then... For example, instead of um, Mike Rudhad going, you know, to Berlin and hanging out and then coming up here an hour before he set, he came up here yesterday at lunchtime and he spent the whole afternoon here and he got really connected to the space and he went on stage, I think, at 3 or 4 a.m. So he spent the whole day and the night and got to see everybody else and it's too common now when you're playing festivals or playing clubs that you don't actually get to see the artist that you're playing with you turn up an hour before you play and you leave an hour after you play maybe and what's really nice here is that the artists are watching each other and falling in love with each other's music and being inspired and we also want to kind of uh push that idea of collaboration and and people getting together and and maybe even doing some kind of impromptu music together as well we want to encourage that and and so we're all growing together and being inspired together. That's, that's, for an artist, it's really nice. And it's so refreshing to come here and, you know, have a, have a heart connection to something memorable rather than to walk into a, a you know, a huge sponsored festival with all of these people. And it just feels like a money-making machine and you feel like you're part of it. And it's nice to come and feel like you're here to give back and you're here to be a part of this together, yeah. But when you're just saying or talking about money, I was wondering, is it you know hard to do such a festival or yes. what? Is it? Yeah, it's impossible. Yeah, you lose. I mean, the festival, you know, from a monetary standpoint, we lose a lot, quite a lot of money, you know. Um, but to do beautiful things, honestly, I'm, most people don't understand. Like for me to tour as Ryax or to me, for me to tour with Frank, we lose money when we tour. When I tour as Ryax, I lose money or I break even. Yeah. And I have to see that as a giving exercise. I have to see that as a reason to go out there and to give to people. It's not a way for me to, you know, cash in. It's any money that I make in these kind of arenas, we pour back into the shows. We, if you start making some money, okay, what else can we do? Let's get a cellist and a viola player, or let's let's work on a beautiful light installation. And here at the festival, we're doing the same thing, you know. Um, You know, how can we keep sponsors away from this? How can we keep it in the hands of the people? How can we, um, you know, give something? But at the same time, we have to work towards sustainability. And um, that's that's always the, the point. How can you be sustainable and still give something beautiful? So we'll find that balance eventually. But you were already talking about next year or the upcoming years. So you're pretty sure you're you just started something. Yeah, I mean, this is the year two, you know, and to feel the, the change from the first year to now is already quite amazing. And to feel people talk about it in Amsterdam and Ireland and Portugal and Italy and Australia or the idea that um, people are taking something very special. Everyone here kind of has come up to me over the last few days and, and said, you know, I feel like I'm part of this secret. Like, I feel like I have this treasure. And um, we want to make sure that this this feeling stays, but we can still grow together. And I think the most important thing for me is that we have a core community that that stays with us. And maybe you know every year the same kind of community comes, and then the community builds, and we do it together with intention. And and uh, I, you know we have to try a couple more years. I mean we can't stop now. You know we just started something. You have volunteers, right? We have volunteers that come up. Um, And we love that idea, the volunteer system. Uh, people come up to the festival uh, sometimes like a week before. Not the volunteers so much, but our, our crew. And they come and they build everything. There's a small group of people. And we have dinners together, family dinners each night. And 
that's that's the beginning, you know, where you have the people come together to create it, and they're already a community, they're already a family. It's the right it's the right seed for the rest to grow. And um, the volunteers this year have been awesome. They've all talked to me about how they love uh, helping the people off the shuttle bus and showing them where to camp out in the fields, and and then they see them for the next two days, and they already have a relationship and a friendship with them. And then, you know, the next day, the other person is volunteering that they met, you know, and they're doing something to help out. And um, it makes you feel a part of it. It makes you feel engaged in it. And it, and that's part of it, too, is that everybody here, you know, you look around and you see people and they're doing things together and they're helping it function. And human beings are powerful when we're together as a group. We can do a lot of good stuff. And so we're trying to kind of uh, help that culture that as well. What I say now might be a big thought, but you know, it's um, what do you say? I do, yeah. Well, I like the idea of you know doing this together with people I haven't met before, and then as you say, like a group or a family kind of thing. But it's if you tell it to somebody to, to someone, and then they might say you know it's hippie ask. But what I like about it is experience it and then go back to normal life and try to relive take it. it you know, it, yeah. yeah, take it with me. Would you agree? Because I think that's the best. That could be the best part of a festival like this. Yeah, I mean, in the beginning, the intention was always to give people something where they took it back into Berlin or they took it back into a city and they had this shift of consciousness a little bit. Um, it sounds very hippie because I grew up maybe as a hippie, so I speak like that, you know. But I also, you know, have spent my adulthood in in clubs in Berlin or in festivals or in recording studios. And the balance is uh, how do you run something incredibly well? have amazing sound, have amazing curation, have sustainable eco toilets, have local um, you know, food from the, the people in the farms around here. Make sure everything works and runs really well. And then the, the kind of what you're talking about, I guess that hippie element is, is what you experience on top of that. So it takes a balance of very well thought out, um, constructed uh, planning. And then once you have all that, you create an environment of safety and beauty where people can have change you know that they, they can wake up and go I'm just going to go lay on the grass and I know that I'm going to be taken care of and I've got a smoothie there and a drink there and this music's amazing and and then their mind does change you know and by the end of the weekend they're like wow that's I didn't look at my phone and I had this I met so many beautiful people and I'm ready to go back into Berlin and smile and walk down the street and look at somebody in the eyes, you know, or get off the U-Bahn and, you know, somebody needs 20, 20 cents. Sure, take it, you know. Just, just that, that's where it begins. That's where that thought begins. Okay, so I will try to do it in okay. Berlin or okay. somewhere else where, okay. where I'm going to be. So I thank you for the festival and the opportunity to, to have a weekend like this. I mean, the weather is with you also. Uh, yeah, each, so far each year. Maybe we're, we're, we're blessed by that. But um, there's been crazy rain a few days before and then suddenly we get two days of beautiful sun. So um, everyone's on our side right now. But I think even if it rained, people would be, you know, na you know, in the rain dancing and, and enjoying that. So it's the mindset. It's how you decide to see it. But yeah, we are very lucky. This is amazing. So enjoy the festival, the rest of it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shin. Thank you. Of course. <laughs>